Hi, so this is self video number two, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the situation with the snail, the endangered snail daughter, and how that relates to policy formation. I'm also going to talk about the Winter War of 1939 and compare that to what we had to read about for the science portion of our class today. So the situation with the endangered snail daughter is that a snail daughter is a species of minnow, and it is on the endangered species list. So it is protected under the Endangered Species Act. And the species of snail darter was found in the Little Tennessee River. No big deal. But then there was a major conflict because of a proposed project called the, Tel the Teleco Project, which would was a water resource development project to provide economic development, hydroelectric, flood control, and recreation benefits. So the issue is this was that they couldn't carry out the project because of the endangered species in the river. And this microeconomic problem became a macroeconomic problem and went through all the court systems and, and eventually ended up in the Supreme Court. And through the Supreme Court, there was an established interagency panel to review the project for possible exemptions from the act's provisions. So trying to make it work so that they could work on this project and maybe disregard the snail darter. So this interagency panel was a type of presidential organization formed to help really focus on the issue and do research and find out all the facts. Um, after this panel did all of its research, they ruled that the Teleco project should not be exempt because it was ill-conceived and uneconomic. So this became a big issue because they really wanted to pass this um, project and get to working on it because they felt it would benefit their state. So Tennessee congressman then sneaked through a provision that directed the TVA to complete the project. So the Tennessee Valley Authority was able to um, work it out that they would somehow be able to do the project even though it was against the provisions. And because of the citing political problems and the difficulty of vetoing the bill that would fund numerous other projects, President Carter signed the bill and it was allowed that the Teleco project could be carried out. So through this whole process, um, interest groups played a major part in influencing the congressmen and the legislators and really getting their message out and letting them know like this is what we want. However, it was going against an other, another act that was already put into place, the Endangered Species Act. So it was just a major issue that came into play um and the fact that they could go against an already proposed law to be able to um complete this project was very surprising to me you would think that because of the endangered species they wouldn't be able to go through with it um so it basically became an issue of macro political struggle so eventually the dam was the teleco project was completed and they said there's going to be all these benefits, but the benefits that were promised were never fully realized. So I was very surprised by this, that they went through all this work and then like all the benefits they say were going to happen didn't even fully happen. So it was like they were trying to get this passed just to get it passed and not necessarily caring about the other things that were being affected. Um, and all this was done through... In, within the boundaries of the political system. So I thought it was very interesting that um, nothing was illegally done, but yet they got around the interagency panel's prop proposition that it sh they should not be able to complete the project and that the minnows ended up having to suffer from that. Um, so the other, another point So you could see within the endangered snail daughter that the two ac action activities of policy formation were completed. There were questions asked and different organizations created to make sure that everything was being processed was done and rules were eventually drafted and a bill was signed for this proposed project. So the other topic we had to read about was the Winter War of 1939. And in this war, it was Finland versus Russia, where Finland refused land trade and Stalin initiated the Winter War in November of 1939 to try to get this land back from Finland. 
Now, Russia is this, the Soviet Union, Russia is this huge nation, so much bigger than Finland, and Finland should have not lasted very long. However, there are several factors, mainly the weather, that led to them being able to actually hold off Russia for a very long time. The war ended up lasting four months until March 1940, and the Soviets were not expecting this at all. And this was possible because of the strong leadership, the hard fighting, and the unusually cold winter, which was 3 to 10 degrees Celsius below average. And where the max cooling was happening in this region was where the war took place. So a main reason like why this weather was like that is because um, Finland is located in a high latitude. It is part of the Arctic Circle, so the temperatures are much colder there. It's also a polar climate where it temps average below 50 degrees. So in general, the fact that the winter is very cold makes sense, but the extreme cold is what was very surprising to them during this time in 1939. Um, they would have four hours of daylight each day with negative 30 degree Fahrenheit temperatures along with blizzard conditions. So literally it was just terrible weather. It was freezing, it was snowing, not ideal weather to fight a war in. So the, so the Soviets were at a disadvantage because they wore dark clothing, which was easily spotted in the white snow, while the people from Finland were wearing white and they blended in and they were also able to use skis to transport and get around while the Soviets depended on using vehicles and artillery, which weren't as affected in the extreme cold weather. So their engines froze, and so did their lubricants that they would use in their guns. So they needed to develop new technology to be able to fight in this war. However, it wasn't developed and created until a year after this time, so the war was far from over when this happened. Um, they eventually got a new leader who was able to adjust the fighting in the cold and eventually took over Finland in March of 1940 when they signed the Moscow Peace Treaty, where Finland gave Russia 9% of their territory and 20% of their industrial capacity. So Finland eventually lost anyway, which was expected, but they were expected to lose a lot quicker, but because of the weather, we're able to hold off longer. Um, Finland was just more prepared used proper camouflage and tactics that allowed them to maneuver in the blizzard and the dense forest. So the Finland really took into account their environment and really made sure that they were adjusting to what was happening. And it is very rare that something like this will happen, but it does happen because of um, climate change. the climate change and the radiation effects because during the winter time, especially in the Arctic Circle, is when those areas will get the least amount of light, some days maybe even getting no sunlight and having the sun never come up. So it's very cold to begin with. And then there's always changes going on with the weather and that made an impact on this war, the Winter War of 1939 between Russia and the Soviet Union. So as a whole, both of these articles talked about different topics that we've been talking about in class. Um, the endangered snail dart are focusing more on the policy part of the class while the winter war focused more on the weather portion. So two discussions I have, one for each of them. For the uh, policy part, my discussion question is, do you think President Carter should have signed the bill into law? Why or why not? And for the Winter War of 1939, what other climate factors could have had an effect on the Finland-Russia War, which were things that were listed in the, text, the textbook and um, could have played an impact because of the way Finland's um, geographic features are. So thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in class on Monday.